Okay, hello and welcome back to another painting video. Now, uh, in our last painting videos that we had, I actually had a few students contact me and say, Hey, Mr. Gray, we really love to watch your painting. We'd love to paint along with you, but we don't have paints at our house. So, I decided let's do something a little different today. Now, a media that you can actually paint with is coffee. And I've painted with coffee quite a few times. It works quite well. In fact, you can paint with coffee just like you would with watercolor. And I do actually have a watercolor video if you'd like to go and watch that. It's 15 minutes long, teaches you everything you need to know about how to paint with watercolor and get started with watercolor. So it's a very informative video. But today, what you're going to need, we are going to be painting with coffee. So obviously you're going to need some coffee. And the brushes I'm going to use, these are very simple craft brushes that I picked up from Walmart. They were like three bucks and I bought them because they came in a pack that had a fan brush in it and fan brushes are kind of hard to come by so I took out a fan took out the fan brush used it for something else. It's no longer in this pack but these are just some little craft brushes that I had laying around the house so I thought hey let's use it. Now if you don't have brushes, what you can use is you can use Q-tips. You can also use your fingertips if you want because, well, it's coffee. It's not going to hurt you in any way. Now, you don't want to get coffee on the carpet or on your clothes because, well, coffee stains. So you don't want to do that. But today, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be painting with coffee. And let me go ahead, close down this camera. Boom, bring up our other camera right up there. And you can see that I have a reference picture right there of a coffee cup. And I thought, what better to paint with coffee than coffee? So I'm going to go ahead and, as always, we start off with a basic sketch. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch this out. And it's very simple, just an oval. Actually, it's, uh, it's two ovals and then a half over oval inside of it. So I'm going to start off with a sketch right here, just kind of a roundish oval. And when you are sketching out with coffee, it is just like with uh, watercolor. If you want to put an under image in it, you can. It's not required. I like to do that because it gives an extra bit of depth to your artwork. But yeah, just lay down your oval, just like I showed you before. How you draw an oval or you draw a circle and make it perfect every time is you actually draw with your shoulder instead of your hand because when you draw with your hand you actually snap your wrist up like that and you create an oblong oval that's not very uh, fluid. Now if you draw with your arm and your shoulder and you keep your pencil straight and you don't bend your wrist, you keep your wrist straight and you draw like that with your shoulder, you actually get a perfect circle or oval every time depending on how you want to do it. Just go over it a couple times and boom, there you have it. So we have the basic rim of the cup of coffee right here and then I'm going to come down here and I'm looking at the reference picture. The reference picture uh, kind of looks like it's a bowl kind of coffee cup, not really a mug. So I'm just going to come down here, curve it around kind of like that. There's half of it and then same thing over here, just down, curve it around. Now these lines, we're going to erase them in a bit. This is just our basic sketch. Oh, and the paper. I'm actually using a thicker kind of watercolor paper. It's a little bit thicker than normal paper. If you have regular paper and you want to use that, that's perfectly fine, you can. In fact, uh, whenever you get done with your artwork on regular paper, it'll actually crinkle up. And there's an easy way to fix that. All you need is a heavy book. Put a book on it. And I know that sounds silly, but it works. Just put a book on it, and it'll flatten it right back out. Okay, so now I'm going to draw the saucer that the cup is sitting on. So we actually want to try to draw this same kind of oval, just really big, right down here. And the reason why we do that is because we are going to try to keep it with perspective. And with perspective, if something is a circle then as it gets closer to you, it's going to be the same kind of arc. It's just going to get a little bit bigger. So same arc as before. We're just going to make it bigger. So it looks like it is a saucer 
right there. Okay, and there's a small little divot inside of that that comes down right there. And again, this is something that we will fix in a little bit. I know these lines are not perfect. That's okay. And inside of here, we have another rim. So I'm going to go ahead, start this rim right about there, curve it around, and I'm going to let it meet up with that rim. And then this, we are going to curve around like that. And for those of you who are observant, this is just a standard number two pencil. It's all I'm using. You don't need anything fancy. Okay, and now for the water or the coffee. It has exactly the same curve as the lip. It's just being brought down because it is setting inside of the coffee. So the same curve that is in the cup, just bring it on down, just like that. Okay, and we actually have a little handle that's sticking up right up here, curves up and goes down. That's a little big for what the picture actually is, but that's okay. We'll fix that in a little bit. And that's about it for our cup and our saucer. Looking at this picture, I see that this needs to be curved down a little bit more. Okay, now eraser. So I need to erase all my lines that I don't need. I don't want it to be too heavy handed because, well, we will be going over this. So just kind of erase everything you don't need. And as I told you in the previous video, actually one of the previous videos, nothing in reality has a black line around it. All those are created with values and shading. That's it. So nothing in reality actually has a black line around it. So we are going to be creating that with the coffee. Now, if you don't want to do a sketch and you just want to go straight into this painting, go for it. I, it's coffee. The best, it's very simple to paint with. And you don't really need a whole lot of background with it to paint with it. It's just coffee. Got that. And I need to soften up these lines right up here. And if you notice, the dark lines that I put in there, they're still showing through after I erase them. And that's why I drew those lines really dark, so I could still have something to guide myself. <sighs> okay, there is our basic coffee coffee mug with saucer. Fix this line right here. Okay, now for painting. This is the fun part. So, now that we have our sketch done, all we have to do Select our brush. We have our coffee right here. I know it's blocked off by the reference picture, but I'm just going to dip my paintbrush right in here and I'm going to put it right inside of this. And as you can see, I already made a drop. That's okay. We're painting with coffee. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Okay. I guess I'll go ahead and start here. I'm going to blend some of this around just like that. And we do have a shadow there, 
but we also have some highlights, so I want to really just put in some shadows over here. Now something that I'm going to do, I wanted to do this first, but I got a drop of coffee on there. I'm going to go ahead and tape this down. And the reason why is because whenever you are painting with something wet like watercolor or coffee, a paper is going to move around and it's going to eventually crinkle. So I'm going to get some tape. I'm going to tape this down. Let's make sure this is in the video. Okay. Don't want to tape it down somewhere. There's no video on it. Ideally, you would like to tape all four corners. I'm just going to tape two of them for now. If I think I need to tape the other corners, I will. But for now, we're just going to tape this down. Okay, I'm also pulling on this a little bit to make sure it's tight. And there we have it. Now, you may notice that these lines are a little bit hard to see. With watercolor and with painting uh, with coffee, the idea is you are going to build up the colors. So this is the same thing if you were painting with watercolors. What I'm doing, just adding in some more coffee right down here. Oh, and the darker the coffee, the better. If you can get fresh black brewed coffee, that's really good because you can get a lot of values with that. If you want a lighter coffee, just water it down. Okay, we are looking at our reference picture going around through here. And something to keep in mind, if you have white paint, you can always go back in and add in some white to make the highlights. If you do not have white paint, then you need to keep the white of the paper, the white in the artwork, because, well, you don't have anything to touch it up with later. So the idea with painting with coffee, you have to paint something, then you have to let it dry, then you have to paint something else and then you have to let it dry. It is a painting waiting game. So we have that done. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to get a smaller brush. Let's see if I have one here. There we go. That'll work and that'll work. So I'm actually getting these two brushes right here. They're a bit smaller than the one I currently have. I'm mainly going to be using this big brush to scoop out some more coffee. But I'm going to take this smaller brush and I'm going to get it wet, roll it around in the coffee. Actually, I think this brush is new. Yes, it is. It hasn't been used. i got to break that in. Okay, so if you ever get a new brush and it's solid and thick, all you have to do to break it in is just run it through your fingers like that, kind of twist the bristles around. That'll straighten it out, pull any loose hairs out, and then you're good to go. Okay, so looking back at my reference picture, I see that I have a line that comes in right about here, and it circles in. Comes up, and it gets darker right around the rim. And one of the reasons why this is so fun is because people see you painting with coffee, and they're, they look at you like, what? And then you can explain, hey, yeah, I'm painting with coffee. And then they're like, oh, wow, that's really cool. I never thought about that. You can actually do that. Well, yeah, it's fun. It's simple. And pretty much everybody has access to coffee. And it's like I tell my students. It's not what you have access to. It's how you use what you have access to. If you don't have paint and you want to paint, there's other creative ways to paint. Okay, let's see here. And I am just looking at my reference picture, trying to fill all these in. And if you get a clump of paint, sorry, clump of huh, coffee that's built up like that, all you have to do is wait for the other areas to dry and just kind of pull it around wherever you want it. That's all you have to do. Either that, or you could take a dry brush, and I'm going to dry my brush off over here, off to the side. Take a dry brush, and you can just whoop and soak all that right back up. 
just like that. Okay, let's go around in the rim here because we're going to want to build up this color. So let's right around in this rim. Okay, I'm going to darken this up a little bit. And like I said, guys, this is just a waiting game. This part over here is pretty much dry. So now I can go back in and I can add in some more details that I previously didn't see. So boom, or you couldn't see with just that wash. And that's what this is. Whenever you lay down a certain color across the whole thing, that is called a wash. And with coffee, you are going to be laying down a lot of washes. Now, if you want to add in some color to this and you don't necessarily just want uh, coffee on there and you don't know what to add in, you can either add in watercolor or you can do food coloring. Food coloring works too with this method. It just takes a lot of time. That's all it is. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add in this color right here. The key with this is you need to put down a layer, let it dry, and then go back over it and try to put down more. It's just a layer and waiting game. That's all it is. The more layers you put on there, the darker it gets. And also the longer it takes to dry. I'm going to go ahead and soak some of this up. i got a dry brush right here. And I understand this can be tedious, it can take some time, but it is fun to paint with just coffee. Now, let me see if we can actually see this a little better because it's getting whitewashed out with that camera. I'm going to adjust this camera right over here and we're going to see if we can see it better with it. See here, I'm bringing over my extra camera. Let's go ahead and get a full cam going on with this. Yep, yeah, there we go. So with that camera, you can actually see it a little bit better. So yeah, it's getting darker. It's amazing what a difference in camera can do. I 
Okay, so I'm going to change back to my other camera. I just wanted to show you that the difference in cameras, you know, you can actually see a difference in there. So I'm going to change this right back. Back to the way we were. Okay, there we go. So now I can actually use both my hands and paint and not just hold one camera. Yes, for those of you who are just joining in, we are painting with coffee. And the idea with painting with coffee is it's basically a waiting game. You put down a wash or a flat color with the coffee and then you wait for it to dry and go over it again and it just takes a little bit of time that's all a good way to check to see if your layer of coffee that you put down or watercolor or whatever you're using is dry is to use the back of your hand so if you use the back of your hand you can actually feel to see if it's dry and the reason why you can do that instead of the fingertips is because your fingertips are typically dirty and full of oil and you don't want to damage your paper back of your hand however is actually pretty clean. Most people when they wash their hands they also wash the back of their hands and most of the time the back of their hands don't well doesn't get dirty very often. So once your area is dry you can go back in and start adding in some more coffee to it and it'll make a darker value. Oh, hey, Dylan, how you doing? It's good to see you stopping in. Let's go ahead and add in some darker values up here. And like I said, just a waiting game, guys. You have to see what areas are dry, then add in some more colors to it. Please do not spill coffee on your uh, notebook or Chromebook or whatever you're referring to. Please be careful with the coffee. You don't need to go crazy with it. All right. Let's see here. Just waiting for that to dry a little bit. Oh, I meant to destroy the notebook. <laughs> well, uh, I hope I'm doing a good job at it, I suppose. Telling you all to actually do art. Ooh, I know it's crazy. But no, really, you all have been doing an awesome job. I've been really proud of you, you guys. So, what I'm actually doing off to the side... I am mixing up just a little bit of pigment into my coffee because I realized I did not brew this coffee dark or deep enough. So I'm just trying to make my own imitation coffee over here. OK, 
Okay, so over off to the side, I make my own little imitation coffee. Basically, it's the same thing as watercolor. Just like with uh, the coffee itself, it's just watercolor. You can do the exact same thing with watercolor paint. So, making my own little imitation over here. And I'm still mixing this with coffee, just changing the tone a little bit. Yes, you can. Uh, in fact, you don't even actually have to have coffee to paint like this. All you have to have is basically anything with some color. You can even use food coloring if you want. So what I have right here that I mixed up, I actually took a little bit of my coffee, mixed in a little bit of pigment to it because, like I said, I wanted to get a darker coffee and I really don't have time to go upstairs and brew some more coffee right now so I'm just taking a really black dark coffee so as you can see right there that just makes a very watery kind of black coffee and that's pretty much what this is kind of like a mocha so I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna look at my reference picture and I'm just going to add it in right up here I'm just gonna soak and bleed right into it That way it's going to give us a nice, rich, dark color. Like I said, still mixing this with the coffee. I just add a little bit of pigment to it. And this technique, if you want to go back and watch my watercolor, is called wet on wet. And what that does is it actually spreads out and bleeds just like that. Uh, I don't know if that'll work, but hey, if you've done that before and you know that it works, you can. I've, I've never tried that with the markers, but hey, if you say it works, go for it. Get some darker colors right in through here. And looking at my reference picture, I got some dark colors right over here. So I'm going to dip this right back into my paint. Sorry, my coffee. Going to get my natural coffee color right there. A little bit darker coffee over here. And let's blend this in just like that. And now this stuff, some really dark mocha color, and plop this in right in there. Yes, we are uh, using coffee and painting coffee. <laughs> I thought that was a uh, good use of the coffee. Let's see here. We got a dark ring. It looks like right about there. Then it picks up and fades out. kind of looks like it's a shadow in there so we'll wait for that to dry completely then we'll go in and add a shadow to it and I know this is a uh, kind of tedious task but like I told you at the beginning of the video, it is what it is. This kind of style of painting is a lot of 
waiting, drying, adding more layers, but it's fun. Uh, dare I say it's kind of mind numbing, gets your mind off of things, and it's just really fun. And yes, yes, you can. You can use tea. The stronger you make the tea, the darker the color is going to be. So if you make it really, really strong tea, it does make it darker color. So it works out a lot better like that. Yes, yes, you can. You can use green tea and red tea. In fact, if you do use the um, green tea, it's very light. You're going to have to use a lot of different layers in order to build up the green, but you can use that, and it actually turns out looking pretty neat, too. Mixing right into my coffee cup. And you all can't see this, but it's off screen. I'll move it on screen a little bit. That is actually my coffee cup. So I'm just mixing these directly in there. And that's where I'm pulling my uh, liquid from. Let's look at this reference picture. Boom, right here. Plop some more colors in there. Uh, yes, actually printer paper will curl up a little bit. The best way to uh, use printer paper, if you have painter's tape or scotch tape like this, stick the adhesive side or the sticky side on your um, blue jeans first and then that will remove some of the adhesive from it and then you can put that down now whenever it that that will help a little bit but it's still going to wave and curl in fact this one still is waving and curling and I will change the camera so you can see it but uh, it is actually waving and curling still and this is actually art paper this is paper specifically made for watercolor and it's still curling but how you fix that is after it completely dries, then you take it and you flatten it between books. And I know that sounds silly, but you just take a really big, you know, thick book, sandwich it in between it, stack some stuff on top of it, like, you know, five, ten pounds of books, let it set like that overnight, and boom, it'll be flat by tomorrow morning whenever you get up. So let's see, continue back here. Uh, where was I at? Okay. See, this part up here looks like it's dry, so we'll add in more colors right down through here. And like I said, just a building game. You just build up the colors as you need them. Yeah, like a dictionary. Good analogy. Okay. I'll plop those in just right there. Building up these colors, getting my dark colors in there. Okay, and let's see. There we go. Well, I'm glad to see that the uh, other teachers are providing links. I mean, that, that's awesome. I'm going to tell Mr. Taylor, thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, we are here every day. I try to stream at about 1130. So if you want to stop in, say hi, see what's going on. Uh, there's usually a couple more people in here than this. I guess today they're... 
busy doing other stuff, but that's okay. These videos do go up later, so you can always come back and watch them later at your leisure if you want. So if you want to wait till tonight to watch it, that's fine. I keep all these videos on my uh, YouTube channel. get some darker values in here and I'm going to right around there blop that off just a little bit same thing with that I'm probably going to let all this dry a little bit more because it's starting to get a little sloppy and I can come in here and go Just like that. I have not tried that, but I've seen a lot of my students do it in class. So, I mean, it looks neat. It's just something I've never tried. That's really neat. I'm going to try that. I never thought about that. There's all kinds of things you can do with uh, things around the house that you just wouldn't think of. Really neat stuff. All right. That part I really want to work on, but I have to wait for it to dry, just like this right here. So actually, what I can do at this point, I can go ahead and I can start doing some of the background. So let's rinse off our brush right here, and I'm using my, ooh, I'm using my coffee to rinse my brush, but that's okay. I guess we're just painting with coffee after all. I get some of that coffee off my eraser. Okay, let's go ahead and get our big brush. And I'm going to put down some background color. So let's say right up here and go kind of long through there. Just little washes here and there. Actually, yeah, you can pretty much use anything to paint as long as you know how to get different values with it usually that's by watering it down but yeah if you can come up with something to create a value scale there is no reason why you cannot make art with it there's so many different famous artists out there that make art with unconventional methods it's unreal Yep, as long as, if you have a really dark color, you can actually just add some water to it and get different values. That's all you have to do to it. And in fact, what I'm doing right here, I'm trying to make this look more like a uh, coffee artwork. I'm actually probably going to put some coffee rings in here and things like that, where I'm going to actually pick this up and just go, and just kind of put it down like that, and then bring it over here and kind of like that off to the side that way whenever it dries you can't really see it in this camera but there's a coffee ring right there and whenever it dries it's going to look like someone just plop with their coffee cup just put it right down on there lots of fun stuff you can do with this and I mean, come on it's coffee have fun with it you know I mean you don't have to this isn't going to be a beautiful masterpiece by the end of it it's just having fun Not saying you can't make a beautiful masterpiece out of it, because you can. There's actually artists that just primarily paint in coffee. Me, though, no, I personally prefer watercolor, but coffee's fun.
Mm, let's see here. What do I do with my brush? There it is. Right. Let's see here. A bit of coffee right in there. And I'm going to add in a few of these shadows and hopefully it won't eat away at everything that I've done right along in there just like that. Okay. Oh, that's really neat. Yeah, that's one of the methods to uh, painting with watercolor. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize is when you paint with watercolor, you actually want to paint with the water and not necessarily the color. That's why it's called watercolor, because you paint with the water instead of the color. But it is totally uh, possible and a method that a lot of people use to just go on and put the color down first and then whitewash it or take a bunch of water and wash over it. That is a valid method that a lot of people use. So what I'm doing right here is a method called wet on wet, and I'm taking wet paint, or in this case, wet coffee, and I'm putting the coffee down over another surface that is already wet, and I'm making kind of like the wood grain effect that you see going on. Again, this technique is outlined in that watercolor video if you'd like to go look at it. A remind? Uh, what exactly is a remind? I haven't heard of that. Is it a kind of social media? It's not completely dry, but it's close. We'll go ahead and add in a little bit here. Oh, no, I haven't really got into that. Uh, what I've been doing, I've mainly just been doing this on my uh, a Google Classroom. See, my current students, before we left, I gave them all a Google Classroom. In fact, uh, my other students from my other classes also had the Google Classroom. If you've previously been in, the, in there, you can actually log back on there and see my content that I've been posting. But, yeah, if you uh, just want to stop in, and look in this it is pretty much every day at 11:30 i am doing these so at some point every day i've been going live and so far it's been working out pretty good but yeah so far i haven't used anything else other than just google classroom and a little bit of youtube to connect with my students and so far it's been doing pretty well i've had a lot of students submit their artwork via uh email and google classroom and things like that but yeah uh if you want to stop in and see 
it's every day at around 11.30. I go live. You're free to stop in, chat, whatever you'd like. Usually we have more people in here than this. And if you ever want to look at any of the videos after we get done, I do post them online on my channel. So it's the same link as before, just on my channel. And you can see all the previous videos. When you go to videos, you can actually click on live and you can see the live uh, replay of the videos. Or you can wait until I uh, shrink it down and I take out all the commentary and everything else and we just post the raw video footage sped up. And I call that my speed paintings or my speed drawings or something like that. Basically it condenses an hour down into three minutes. Oh, come on. I'm sure it wasn't that bad. Oh, thank you. Uh, speed paintings is actually a real thing. It's where uh, people paint stuff or draw stuff, whatever they want, and then they take it into a time-lapse program or they just speed it up in their video editing software, and then they make a speed painting of it. So it's everything condensed down to a very quick amount of time, so you can see the end product really fast. Really neat stuff. I always like them. So yeah, at this point we are almost done. We are just waiting for some colors to dry and then we'll add in some more details. I'm going to go back in, water down my paints again. Sorry, paints. I can't help but say paints. Water down this coffee again and then we will add in some more details with the background. Yeah, sometimes it happens like that. You gotta be real careful about the colors you use because sometimes it looks different than what you envision. Hey, it's just practice. And like I've said multiple times, it's not what you have. It's how you use what you have. Just takes practice. That's all it is. So what I did there, I put down a nice little white wash over it with coffee. I'm going to go back into my darker coffees right here. I'm going to go right back over those same lines that I did before. Crisscrossing them a little bit so they spread out just like that. And this is going to make neat little wood grain effects. So we're going to just right in here like that. Nice little wood grains that we got going on here. Nice little coffee stains. Because that's all this is. When this dries, it's going to look like a bunch of coffee stains.
<laughs> you hung all your upside door drawings right side up. <laughs> well, I mean, they're yours. You can do with them as you wish. But that is a way to increase your drawing very quickly. So don't ever try to just uh, breeze on through those. those. Those lessons, they actually work. Hey, that's really neat. You ought to show me a picture of that sometime. Oh, good old coffee. And all my mocha coffee dried up. Okay, let's go back here. Let's look. I need a little bit right in here. Comes up and shades in just like that. So right now we're almost done. I'm just adding in some of the shading and values into it. All right, well, I can't give you, uh, okay, if you have my classroom code, go ahead and plug that in. Uh, it did change from last semester. If you uh, didn't plug it in last semester, then you'll have to plug it in again. Email me, I'll give you the classroom code so you can actually, you know, look at it. I cannot put it out on YouTube, obviously. But yeah, just go ahead, shoot me an email, and I can give you that code. This is one dirty coffee cup. I mean, over where I'm at, it's not bad. It hasn't really hit us yet, but, I mean, preventive methods, you know, just always got to keep proactive, try to keep ahead of the game. That's what it is. I mean, it's not a game, obviously. What I mean is the name of the game is trying to stay ahead of everything and stay safe. So you always want to try to think of ways to protect yourself from it. So you always want to think, am I washing my hands enough? Am I uh, protecting myself when I go out? Am I doing anything? You know, all that good stuff. You always want to keep that fresh in your mind. But yeah, that's, that's it. Just preventive methods. Okay, and let's see here.
see how long this stream's been going on for. We got on here 50 minutes. Okay. So we're getting close to an hour of power on this. It's not too bad. Toilet paper and milk. Uh, well, actually, yeah, we actually uh, like to stockpile just that. That's our normal way of shopping. So whenever all this stuff happened, we already had plenty of it, you know, already stocked up. So we were good before this happened. But yeah, they're out of it now in the stores. It's pretty hard to come by. How long do I wash my hands? Well, I don't primarily get out of the house. I am a homebody. I like to stay home. I mainly only travel for work. And since my work is now in my office, I don't really have to worry about that. But I do wash my hands every time I need to go out or anything like that. If I need to go get groceries or I need to go get gas or something like that, I... First off, I've been washing my hands for at least 30 seconds, usually closer to a minute. Then I also use hand sanitizer directly after. And if I don't have access to hand sanitizer, I will use um, Lysol wipes. So double protection right there. And then not only that, if I am pumping gas, I'm also using some protective uh sanitary rubber gloves not like the dishwasher gloves but you know the disposable gloves really staying safe for this one you always gotta be aware of what's going on and try to keep yourself and your family safe Boy, this table smells so much like coffee now. Glad I like the smell of coffee. If I didn't, I'd be running out of my office. Okay, it looks like we are pretty much done with everything except for the black part of the coffee right inside the cup. So I don't want to keep this stream going any longer than I have to. I'm going to go ahead call this a painting and just so we can see this without it being whitewashed I'm going to go ahead and transfer this over to the full cam again so we can see this picture and boom that's what it looks like without it being whitewashed. Not too shabby. I mean, it doesn't look perfect, but hey, we painted with coffee.
Well, guys, for those of you who stuck around, I'd like to thank you for watching. Thank you for uh, coming in, contributing. And, hey, no problem. I'm glad that you all had fun. Like I said, I'm always going to be here. I'm going to try to stream every day at around 1130. So please stop on by then if you want to come in and paint or draw. I have been doing all drawing lessons this week. So if you want to stop in and see some of those, I actually have them posted on the channel. I also have been doing a few paintings. I don't really know what I'm going to do tomorrow. But you know what? We'll find out. That's always fun stuff that we can try. So, thank you very much for watching. I'm glad you all did enjoy the stream. I enjoyed uh, staying with you all, talking with you. And until next time, have a great, wonderful rest of your day. Thank you all.